I need everybody to come join the discussion at PoeMafia.com. That's right, PoeMafia.com. That's www.PoeMafia.com, man. The website is Team Alpo approved, man. It's certified for everything you would like to know, need to know, questions you want to ask, articles you need to read, and everything else, man. You can do that at PoeMafia.com, man. So what you waiting on, man? Hit your Google link, search box, whatever you need to do, man, and click in www.PoeMafia.com, man. I'm telling you, with articles like, can we get back to up to Al Poe being Puerto Rican for a second? And for the love of Poe, the website is starting to grow tremendously, man. And we appreciate y'all, man. But everybody go check Cherry out right now. Join the conversation, man. www PoeMafia.com, man. All right. It really hurt me when they killed Stan. Nobody knew who to shoot. We ain't even have a plan. He sold me my first gun. He held my first son. If I was with him shooting it out, bitch, we the one. I shed tears for my niggas who ain't here. They tattooed and spit that real shit to remember him, bitch. I'm that dude. Catch a op and spit on his baby daughter. I'm that rule right at 3 o'clock as soon as he get out of school. You killed my dude. I don't give a fuck about you. I hope somebody killed you in case I never found you. You already know what time it is, man. How y'all be, man? What y'all up to out there? Y'all still quarantined? Or you niggas out in the world doing what niggas do? You know what I mean? I ain't stopped doing what it do, baby. You feel me? It is what it is, man. If it's written, it will be done. You feel me? If not, so what? You feel me? Hey, I'm going to keep doing what every day. You know, I'm going to keep doing what it do every day. You feel me? But then this year, man, let's talk about um the Preacher Crew versus... The 142nd Street lynch mob or something, man. That's crazy, dog. You know what I'm saying? It had to be some sort of beef there. You feel me? It might be something I'm missing. It could be something I'm forgetting. But something I read led me to believe that it's, it had to be some type of beef between them two factions at one point or so. You know what I mean? What up with y'all? What y'all been watching, man? Who been in these YouTube streets doing their thing, man? A lot of people want to see me get at King Ernie, man. You know what I'm saying? I don't know if I'm going to go backwards this year. You know what I'm saying? A lot of people, they, they keep sending me links to this and that and the other and whatnot. I'm like, look at this, look at this. And, hey, my Agent Orange is acting up and I'm getting the urge to kill. You know what I'm saying? I'm just like, hey, 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 I'm going to be cool on that. You know what I mean? Hmm? But, yeah, man, um... Let's get to it, man, without further ado. It, you feel me? Uh, in a case the FBI was working on involving the 142nd Street lynch mob, agents came in contact with individuals looking to help themselves. Now, we all know that means cooperate. You know what I'm saying? So they came in contact with people when individuals looking to help themselves. These individuals were giving information on the preacher crew. Now, dig, I got this information from Don Deaver. The Street Bible, you did? Now they say that members of the 142nd Street lynch mob was informing on the preacher crew. Why would they do that? That was a question in my mind. Like, why would they do that? <coughs> Shit just seem, seemed strange. You know what I'm saying? Still me, man. Just kick my ass, man. But yeah, that just seems strange. Like, why would they just go to informing on preaching them? You know what I'm saying? And then, it couldn't have been too too good of information, or, or the information couldn't have been too pertinent to the investigation because the, inve the investigation still went slow. You feel me? It's like the investigation still slow. We're going to need somebody inside the organization in order to crack them or whatnot. And from what was said and what I seen, they said preaching them was like the top of the pyramid that C-11 was, was, was trying to crack. You know what I'm saying? So that was just something interesting right there. You know what I'm saying? Like, you hear about Charlie Clips Pops. If I'm not mistaken, it's the same crew, I believe it is. You hear about Charlie Clips Pops being a rat or telling on somebody this and that and the other. But you don't hear about their being informants. Plural. You know what I'm saying? Nobody ever mentions the other names of the other individuals who spoke against other niggas in the streets or niggas in their same organization. Now, I'm not clear on which one Charlie Clips Pops did, whether he spoke on niggas in the organization, which I think he did, but I can't say that he did with clarity, 
or he spoke on individuals in other places in order to lessen his time or whatever the case may be. But in any event, it just seems strange, to me at least, that they would give information on the preacher crew, right? They said nobody would talk about the black hand, though. So the information they gave was kind of null and void, you know what I'm saying? Now, in doing my reading, April 4th, 1990, uh, after helping dismember uh, Malik's body or whatnot, Malik's supposed to be the dude that killed uh, Donnell, to, uh, after helping dismember M Malik's body, preacher crew member Larry Jones contacted the FBI in fear of his life and uh, agreed to cooperate for protection against, for protection against, well, for protection from, rather, sorry about that, the preacher crew. Now, who is Larry Jones, man? You know what I'm saying? He's been to show, you know, a, a little bit. I, I tried to look up pictures of him. I couldn't find any. You know what I'm saying? And if I did see some, I wouldn't know who the fuck I was looking for because they didn't have his name on it or whatever the case may be. So I may have very well ran into a picture of him or two and just didn't know who I was looking for. You feel me? But I, I would like to know who this guy was and why was he so afraid of his life? They said he detailed the ceremony that preaching them had where uh, you get the thumbs up or the thumbs down and you get the thumbs down and you get dismembered and everything else, you know what I'm saying? And like I said, uh, he got spooked, I believe, after he dismembered or helped dismember Malik and get rid of the body parts and whatnot. Now, they didn't say preaching them put him up for a vote, but nothing like that, at least in the article I was reading, you feel me? So that made me wonder, like, what spooked him so much, you feel me? Because them niggas was doing shit like that all the time. You feel me? From what I understand, they was killing niggas, cutting niggas up all the time and shit like that. So, I don't know. Maybe he came up for a vote. And I dig this. Um, let's get to Apple, man. And how did he escape the black hand of death, man? You feel me? Because Malik died. Like I just said, Malik, Malik died. I heard they played football, or soccer, baseball, something with his goddamn head or whatnot over the fact that he killed that little boy or whatnot. So... I wonder how Apple escaped. You feel me? Dig this here. Say, we're preacher in cuff in custody. The U.S. attorney and C-11 were still unclear as to what happened to Donnell Porter. So they persuaded Apple to meet them and explain that, and explain that as a major member of the crew, his not being in custody would likely have him labeled as a snitch. That's just some odd ass reasoning right there. You know what I'm saying? Excuse me, y'all. That's just some odd ass reasoning right there, if you ask me. You feel me? But dig, um, Apple stated that he barely escaped an attempt on his life by other members of the preacher crew, realizing that he'd eventually be killed if not placed under federal protection. Apple decided to cooperate, confessing to five murders and detailing what happened to his nephew. Now that's interesting right there. <clears throat> you know what I'm saying? All of that is interesting. I mean, Apple was a killer. And you know, nobody said he wasn't hell. He helped kill his nephew. You know what I'm saying? But certain individuals, you don't look at certain ways. Like, you know, you hear the preacher crew, you think about preacher. You know what I'm saying? You think about Malik or Cuff. You know what I'm saying? You don't think about the other individuals around him or whatnot. And I'm sure them wasn't all his bodies. The five of them probably was on the crew so they could get that Rico to come together and everything else. You know what I'm saying? But still, that part just crazy too. Now, I dig this here. Um, I wonder why he agreed to meet C-11. That's strange. It don't even seem like they had a warrant for his arrest or nothing like that. They persuaded him to come in. They wasn't kicking doors looking for him. You know what I'm saying? They wasn't beating down doors in the projects and nothing like that looking for Apple. They persuade him to come in and then persuade him to go into custody. You, you might as well see, I mean, the way it seems, the way it's written at least. You know what I'm saying? It says, um, uh, we're preaching cuff in custody. The U.S. attorney and C-11 still unclear as to what happened to Donnell Porter, so they persuade Apple to meet them and explain that as a major member of the crew, him not being in custody would likely label him as a snitch. So that was their reason for telling him to come on in custody? You may you might as well come on and let us lock you up, because if we don't, they're going to think you a snitch anyway. He told any fucking way. He wound up telling any fucking way, though. You know what I'm saying? So it didn't make sense one way or the next, you feel me? He must have needed that protection. 
Like he said, he barely escaped an attempt all his life from the preacher crew or whatnot. So uh, he probably wanted that federal protection. But man, think about that, man. You know what I'm saying? Real nigga to real nigga. I'd rather be free fighting for me myself. It just seemed crazy to me, man. Um, to say, uh, C-11 explained that he would be labeled a snitch if he didn't come into custody. Like I said, so what? You know what I'm saying? Fuck y'all. I wouldn't even, man, I wouldn't have went and met them for shit. Fuck them. You, <laughs> you know what I'm saying, y'all? Especially the streets talk. So if they got cuffed and they got preacher already, you know what I'm saying? I'm not going to see them already. No, I ain't leaving. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Well, you should know you ain't leaving. But anyway, man, that was just some strange shit, man. Now, let's get into this, man. <clears throat> Apple says, Preacher ordered Donnell's death regardless of whether or not the ransom was paid because he had seen their faces. Now, a few people jumped in the comments saying stuff like that to me, too. Like, the boy was dead regardless. This and that other, he wasn't going to get a back. Stop shitting on Rich. And Blase's plea would be woo. But then Shaka says that Preacher ordered the boy released after, after Richard was found dead. But Apple and Malik took it upon themselves to do the thing. And that's why they came up for vote in the ceremony or whatnot. That's why Malik got his head chopped off and dismembered and everything. And probably why they had that attempt on Apple's life. You know what I'm saying? So which one would you believe? You know what I'm saying? That's the debate. Which one do you believe? You believe Shaka or do you believe Apple? You feel me? Because I got to ride with Shaka on that. And the one reason I'm going to say that is because you can't shit on the business. If niggas know we do this kidnapping robbery type shit or whatnot, if we not known for returning motherfuckers safe, then we might as well not kidnap motherfuckers. We might as well just turn this shit into 187s, you know what I'm saying? Straight up robbery homicides. Fuck a kidnap. You feel me? Like shit, that's part of the business. You, you pay, you get them back safe. Not kill every fucking body we kidnap anyway. That fuck up the business. Ain't nobody gonna be trying to pay after that. That's the one reason I'm saying I gotta ride with him on that. But dig this here, man. You make sure you go to www.poemafia.com, man. Check out Cherry and them articles, man. She got a couple new ones up over there, man. I think the latest one might be for the love of Poe or can we get back to our Poe being Puerto Rican for a sec. You know what I'm saying? Go over there and check that out, man. She be writing her ass off. You did what I'm talking about? Ozone O, Up for Debate TV. And you already know who it is, my baby. You see what you see, man. God bless the real.